Hey folks, BQ here. This is the Impact Lounge to all of my subscribers in the U.S. I want to say I hope you had a great holiday. I know I had a really nice holiday with my family. My wife and kids came into town where I'm where I'm at here in Texas right now doing training. And my daughter lives a few hours south, so I was able to have her up here. So really special time for me. I hope everyone in the U.S. had a good Thanksgiving holiday. So I was sitting around today thinking about what kind of content I wanted to add to the channel after taking a few day break. I was scrolling through Facebook today and I saw that for Cyber Monday they were pushing the following DVDs, citing them as cornerstones of, of TNA. AJ Styles, Bobby Roode, Eric Young, and Samoa Joe. Now first of all, they have all the right in the world to put out these DVDs as they are a part of the library and they all these wrestlers spent years in the company. So let me put that out there right now. They have all the right in the world to put that stuff out. If I was a hardcore fan of any of those guys, and believe it or not, I'm not, I could see those as pretty essential DVDs to have. Here's a problem that will plague the company for a very long time. Even though they have the right to do this, they have the right to put this stuff out, these kind of DVDs will always be viewed as attempts to take advantage of the current success that these guys are having in the WWE. Fair or unfair? Because they will always be viewed as the company who try to compete with the WWE while the WWE paid them no attention whatsoever. And I'm just being real with you guys. Now with all this being said, I can see that it's difficult to release DVDs based around certain stars because the impact product is one day a week two pay-per-views a year now yes in the past there were more pay-per-views but as of late we're, we're talking recent memory that's how it's been two hours of tv a week and two pay-per-views a year and you can't even use one night only's and explosion because it's obvious that that's like filler material you know that's not something that they that they take serious in any way whatsoever if they did a little bit you could probably use that as well. And I can see it also being difficult because with a lot of wrestlers having such short runs in the company, I mean, you have to be part of the company for several years to to uh, put together, you know, a library of, of greatest matches. But I have to think, over the last, you know, several months, they could have done something to, to chronicalize the, I don't know if that's a word, the EC3 heel run. Not, you know, the first one, the big, you know, Dixie Carter's nephew, Ethan Carter the third, you know, everything up until the double turn with Hardy. They could have put together a fairly decent DVD of the Wolves, um, Abyss, James Storm. They could have done maybe some kind of beer money DVD that, you know, also covered, you know, that covered their tag team run, um, you know, coming uh, and cover their singles run and then coming back together again. There's a few things that they could have done, but the problem is they don't have a no compete clause where they can put together these kind of projects as soon as someone leaves the company. So by the time they put it together, it seems like they're just trying to take advantage of the new kind of momentum that they have at the WWE. You, they can't do a Hardy's one at this point. That's completely out the window. The only legit they could DVD they could really put together without taking shit for it is probably a Gail Kim DVD. Um, and they could put a James Storm one together, but it just depends on the timing. I fully expect him to end up in NXT. I, I really do. I think a lot of people do. But if you wait for that to happen and then release it, it's a bad look. It's something they got to jump on. Like immediately, and I don't know how I don't know how long it takes them to put together a DVD and compile the list of matches and everything. I have no idea whatsoever, but it's something they got to jump on. And again, Abyss is one that they could probably put together, and uh, Kurt Angle was one that should have been done. And uh, if there is a Kurt Angle one, it's completely escaping me. But I, I really don't think that there is. Um, someone can correct me in the comments if that's the case. But right now there's too much, and we're trying to get away from the TNA. I, I keep telling people this isn't TNA anymore. We to, to us it is, 
but it's really not. A lot of the wrestlers are gone, and I know there's still the impact zone in Orlando and the six-sided ring. There's a lot of elements still there, but it's not TNA anymore. It's impact, and the company views it as a complete, I should say the owners view it as a completely different product than TNA. And they're obviously trying to distance them, distance themselves from those days to a certain extent. But right now, there's still too much reliance on former W, or excuse me, former TNA, now current WWE talents. Two years ago, they were pushing the Sting DVD, and that's all that they had. That 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 was the only like big, you know, big item that they were pushing. And he had been gone for like a year at that point. So I have to believe. You know, the DVDs aren't something they can put together too quickly. But again, they have the right to do this. Um, I, to my knowledge, Ring of Honor does something serious, similar. But the difference is Ring of Honor knows who they are. And they didn't try to, you know, step up and compete. They know that they kind of act as a farm system. And every smaller company technically is. I know we don't want to view Impact that way. But it's 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 a stop on the way to the you know the big league, so to speak, if that's where a wrestler wants to go. Not everyone wants to take it to that level. But because they did a disservice to themselves, established themselves as competition back you know years ago, and all those people who put us in that position are gone now. That's the funny thing. Now it's like the company can't even put out merchandise without catching shit for it from former stars. But it's safe to say that they are still relying on these former stars too much. It's marketing, folks. Perhaps in the current state, it's difficult to put together DVDs that are worth a damn. But that's where it's time to start thinking outside the box. People will not treat the current company stars like stars if the company doesn't treat them like stars. This is BQ. Hit subscribe on the channel. Leave any thoughts you have in the comments. Peace.